We've got the outside tube set up in the fourth axis to engrave. Let's take a look at the sprut cam. Let's Cerakote it. Let's put it all together and then let's test fire it, folks. Welcome to part four of the DIY suppressor video. I forgot in part three to show off the monocore. Flipping it worked great. You can see a groove, but you can't even feel it. So that's great. Well, I'm actually curious to see if it totally goes away when we sandblast it here in a few minutes before Sarah coating. And I'm filming this on the Wednesday that part two came out. So I've only had a chance to see some of the comments, but a lot of great comments, folks, on how to flip it. Two that I thought were really stand out, um, and I think a number of folks had these. One was to machine this block to the same nominal outside diameter as the mono core so that when you put it in the vise, you didn't even have to use a gauge block as a feeler gauge. It would have just self-aligned. The other one, which I think, in my opinion, was even better was leave a little bit of extra material out here, machine that into a square surface. That is dead nuts, perfect, easy, reliable, and then you can easily turn that or machine that down later. So uh, let's dive into the sprut cam. I made one change to the design, which is I've added a slot in the outer tube and we're going to pin, uh, put a little dowel pin in here. It's gonna serve a couple of purposes. It's gonna keep the clamshells separated approximately. It's going to keep the tube, outer tube, clocked correctly, which isn't a big deal except for it. it'll be nice to know that the text is always sort of at three o'clock from the shooter's perspective. But most importantly, you're gonna to wanna to use the tube to twist the suppressor on and off, and that will keep it from rotating. It's pretty tight right now, and the Cerakote, I'm actually nervous, might make it too tight, because that stuff does add about a thou on every surface. So we could easily have four thou or more added on. We'll see, but if it loosens up over time, I want that to be there to, uh, so that nothing twists and, and turns and gets sloppy. So let's take a look at Sprut Cam for the tube. Uh, I've already created the file, but let's show you from scratch because the fourth axis stuff is easy once you do it correctly. So to engrave 2D contouring, change it to an engraver. This will be a quarter inch, 45 there, zero there. And we're going to, so don't select anything yet, just choose base surface, then click the tube and then click OK. Now we can go into our parameters. Because we've chosen that base surface as the um, OD of the tube, the top level is just our clearance and or 50 thou, and then we're going to engrave into the text, say, you know, 4 thou. We may go a little deeper. I think there's an ATF reg of at least 4 thou, and we obviously want to satisfy that, you know, with cushion. Now to select the text, you guys know the trick I like. Turn off the surfaces. Let's view it from the right side. And then what we can do is scroll, hold down and drag a box around everything, and then hold down the Alt key and start deselecting stuff. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt because you've got the um, angle here, but it's still a lot better than trying to select one at a time. And if you make a one little goof, it's not a big deal to fix it all. This one will be is this one will be a little bit easier, less of a slope. So you guys get the idea. Let's uh, finish this one up and we'll take a look just to make sure I've got it all correct here. We'll deselect that whole one. So you can see there, we've got most of the stuff selected, some stragglers on the top there, no big deal. Choose curves, click one, control A to select them all, take off the offset function, tool, or you know, the radius offset of the tool that we were engraving right on the line because we're using engraving bit. This takes a little bit of horsepower to calculate all those lines. I actually just, uh, this is the first video I'm sh filming on a new CAD computer. It's just a Dell Precision Workstation, but my old one, um, the power supply went out on me and it was acting funny and it's four years old and it made me really nervous um, because I can use that computer every day. So I um, set this one up and I'm going to turn that into a computer for Jared and do a fresh Windows install which will be nice. Just too disruptive to uh, to take the time to do a win install on and lose my computer. So I, I'm, um, let's see here, make, a, make sure that looks right. There we 
we going too deep? Yeah, hold on, we're going way too deep. Did I do something wrong? Four thou, not forty thou. But this way I was never, there we go. I was never down a computer. Um, I have two running right now and I'll finish moving everything off. This stuff is some stuff such a pain in the butt, like all your Arduino programs or printer setups and label printers and all that stuff, but uh, we'll get her going. So you guys can see that's clearly working. So let's pull open the other file. As you can see, we've got the text all taken care of. And then to machine that little notch, all we do is 2D contouring. It's a 1 8 inch end mill. You rotate the A axis position to negative 90. That tells it what up is. And we just chose our path. And I modeled it as uh, an 8 inch wide. So I'm going to take 5 thou off each side to just give us a little bit of clearance and very conservative here doing it in two depth of cut passes um you know we're actually doing three because i don't the tube supported out there and um it's just going to take literally the operation is going to take i'm willing to bet it's way less than even a minute um being slow yeah 28 seconds great well, let's head over to the machine <laughs> I've got a half inch dowel pin that I want to use for that little uh, hole we just cut, but uh, I only want it to be about 170 thou long. So the easiest way to do that, stick it in a 5C collet block. I've got 0.33 or so sticking out. So what we're going to do is go to the bandsaw, I'm going to cut that off, and then we're just going to grind it, pretty belt grind it pretty close to flush, and that should do the trick. I'll be right back. All right, let's use some oops, green Loctite 648. It's actually a pet peeve when people call Loctite by their the color, red, blue, all that. Um, this this happens to be one of their retaining, yeah, retaining compounds. It's per, it's great for just this stuff where you want to drive a pin in, and it may be sort of a light press fit anyway, but you want it to stay. This stuff is great. Totally different. Um, totally different than their thread locking compounds. Okay. Punch, try to keep my hands out of the footage. Oops. 
tighten that down. Yes, I know I need to buy a proper spanner wrench for that, which is bad habit. And put my eyeglasses on, shit. Huh. I'd done a test fit off camera without any, there we go, maybe that was it, off without any compound, just real quick. Let's choke up a little on the can. I don't want to uh, be hammering on the mono core. Feels like I'm just not Feels like I'm just not lined up. Um, all right, let's use my hand in the way. And there it goes. There it goes. And I really just want it just a little bit below flush. I like it a hair lower. I think it'll fit deeper. Make sure. Yep, I'm in there in the vise. There we go. Perfect. Now hit it once more. Yeah, I like that. Good. All right, so we've got monocore tube, clamshells, and the nut. Let's throw it together just once to show you how it fits, because that's going to be the question is, how does it change after Cerakoting? I'm going to increase the, uh, there it goes. So it's snug, as you can see, probably too snug. Um, I actually really like having this end block because when I want to push it out, I'm not pushing on the threads with something. Okay. <laughs> Folks. I think that's pretty badass. Take a look. Um, awesome. Now, I would love to test fire it right now as much as you would like to see it test fired. Not going to happen because Cerakoting is easy when, the, when it's done right, which means clean parts, and there's no reason to get fouling all over this thing. So, let's Cerakote. First, I am going to just give it a quick clean off in our parts washer. Can't hurt to get some of the stuff off. Then over to the blast cabinet, it's an aluminum oxide uh, grit. I think I actually bought this from Harbor Freight, the current media. Let's try something really stupid. Let's take a perfectly good, almost brand new, four or $500 GoPro Hero 4, whatever their name is, plus black, limited, blah, 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 silver, gray, platinum. Let's put it inside the blast cabinet. Seriously, I, uh, I really might regret this. Give it a good sandblast. You want a uniform coat. You want to rough it up. That's also a cleaning process. Then you go back into the parts washer and you actually let it soak for half an hour according to the uh, Cerakote instructions. I've cut it a little bit shorter before, but usually I, I just go do something else rather than, you know, to me it seems like you should be able to get it clean in five minutes, but uh, half an hour. Meanwhile, I've got the oven preheating up to temp. Parts were in the parts washer for about half an hour. I put them on the shelf right now so you could see them. Next, let's move them over to that rack and we'll stick them in the oven to gas out for an hour at 300 degrees. 
mix up some Cerakote. Read the instructions if you're gonna do this, folks, but basically, we want the matte finish, that's 24 to one. I'm gonna to try to pour 12 in the graduated cylinder and about half a milliliter of hardener. Um, I don't strain it, you probably should. Um, and then this is my absolute favorite um, HVLP gun for Cerakoting, there's a link in the video below, but I picked this up, I love it. I've I tried a few different ones um, and this should be plenty enough. We'll probably end up even throwing some of it away. The ratio is not incredibly precise, as is evident by the fact that 24 parts of this to one part of that is a matte finish. 12 or half that to one is semi-gloss. So it's not gonna affect the uh, quality of your Cerakote job. It's just, again, the um, finish of whether it's matte or gloss. So this is the trickier part, just to watch it. We want about half. I try to keep it from running down the sidewalls of the graduated cylinder, like that. And then you're supposed to use a glass swizzle stick. I use a straw. Grab our respirator and let's go Cerakote. I almost forgot to mention the MP22 sitting back here torn apart because I also got a Form 1 to SBR this thing. So we are gonna cut this barrel way back and hopefully have the suppressor mounted. I'm gonna keep this uh, same hand guard with it just for now, but hopefully have the suppressor mounted so it should look really cool, kind of just sticking out a hair past the hand guard. So that's gonna be a fun project. We're gonna try to turn those barrel down and the new threads on the Tormacolate. All right, it's, uh, it's raining, let's make this quick. We're starting to rain. First shot ever, folks. Can you hear that? Oh my gosh. Close range into the ground. That works awesome. Oh, that is awesome, folks. Look at this. Look at this thing. Holy cow. I think the lighting's not great. You can see the little stud work. This is freaking awesome. Awesome. Um, we did it, folks. Let me, uh, let's go do some, you know, uh, awesome. I'm gonna wait probably tomorrow when it clears up and do some real sort of tests side by side, which you're gonna see right now. All right, let's put these things to the test. We have got the DIY five inch 1.125 OD can. And then here we have got the SWR Spectre 2 22 long rifle can. It's not the absolute best 22 can out there, but it's pretty good. Um, it's certainly popular, and SWR slash Silencer Co., those folks know what they're doing, so I think it's a 
well, I don't really care. I didn't build this thing to build the absolute best in suppressor technology. I think a lot of folks out there are kind of full of it. Um, hold on the conversation. Um, we're just here to see, does it even work? Like, would you think that's a sketchy, not good suppressor that someone, you know, hacked together or does it work? Um, so we're gonna test it on a semi-auto and then a bolt action 1022. Did you hear what I just said there? Stay tuned. And then we're gonna put mine, uh, at least mine, maybe we'll do this one, on the SBR M&P that I built, which I'm super excited about. Shout out to the folks at Gemtech. I love their 22 subsonic ammo. It's worked great for me. Okay, the wind has died down, which is great. Three shots each. That'll help us with a sort of give a range of outcomes in the first round burst, which is when the residual oxygen makes a little bit of a louder pop. Um, this is semi-auto with the SWR uh, commercial grade can. Same gun, DIY suppressor. Now, semi-auto is going to be a lot louder in the sense that there's going to be um, noise from the action as well as some gas uh, leaking out. So we'll try it here with the bolt in a second. I also just wanted to mention, folks, I'm aware that there is a truck in the background. Um, I'm aware of that and just rest assured that it's comfortable given what's going on here. Bolt action, 1022. What's that mean? One of my favorite guns. This is a PWS, or primary weapon system. They're known for their ARs, um, but they make this thing called the Summit 22, and it is a biathlon style action, or a straight pull bolt. Phenomenal for shooting uh, suppressed, because you can get a relatively quick action cycle, but you're not plagued by the um, issues with sub subsonic ammo on a leaking noise out, and sometimes subsonic ammo doesn't run as reliably. This takes that risk out of it. It also has, I forget who makes this. Oh, there you go, Tactical Solutions. It's a shortened barrel that has a pinned and welded end cap, which means it's not a short barreled rifle, so you don't need any paperwork for the, the gun itself, but it lets us thread a suppressor on the end and not add to the overall length of the firearm. So we're gonna do two shots here. Now, uh, to shoot the DIY can, unfortunately it's too uh, wide OD for this shroud. So what we're gonna do is use that black 1022. I'm just gonna hold the bolt shut. Won't be perfectly the same, but pretty close. Pretty quiet, right? Holding the bolt shut. We'll have to see when we, we edit this, what they sound like, but to honestly, Honestly, I feel like mine's quieter, and I don't, I'm not saying that to be uh, self-serving, but I, I'll put it this way. The DIY suppressor absolutely does not sound like some, you know, hack job that only has half the suppressing value. So that's a win. All right, folks. Now, for what may be, I say this too often, my new favorite gun. I have a lot of favorite guns. Um, it's a 1022 that's missing its barrel. Just kidding. Barrel ends right there. Uh, I think I've actually, I haven't decided when I'm going to post the short barrel video, but I think I probably have already posted by the time this airs. So you've already seen this, but folks, how awesome is this? This gun, this gun weighs nothing. What a fun, cool little package. Let's see how she sounds. All right, folks, unfortunately, you know, 22 ammo is a little bit scarce, so I only have a few rounds left. Just kidding. Let's dump a mag. Awesome. It, literally, you just hear the bolt. It, 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 from my perspective, I don't know how it's going to sound on the audio. Um, some folks mentioned getting decibel readers. Maybe we'll do something more advanced. What I wanted to see is, does this work? And I would say unequivocally, yes. So, folks... Thank you. This has been the most fun project I've ever done. I am so proud of this little guy. It's awesome. It's been a fun little series. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, we're moving on to Arduino stuff. We're going to make some homemade cutters. Uh, lots of good stuff to come, folks. Thanks for the viewership. Thanks for the followership. As always, take care. See you soon.